How can U.S. Navy SEALs be intimate on board an aircraft carrier? The aircraft carrier is a floating city, a self-contained environment where thousands of sailors live, work, and fight, all of whom are focused on completing their task and returning home without incident, but where do the more than 5,000 sailors who reside in close quarters on an aircraft carrier sleep, and can they even be intimate with one another? The crowded sleeping quarters of thousands of U.S. Navy SEALers are cozy, to say the least. Although an aircraft carrier may not seem like an exciting topic, it is a symbol of the sacrifice and devotion made by the men and women who serve our great nation. Despite being on a mission and being busy defending the country, these sailors live in extremely small spaces with bunk beds stacked on top of each other and little room to walk around. Although it is against Navy regulations for sailors to engage in sexual behavior, the sailors will also require intimacy. Being stationed on an aircraft carrier makes it extremely difficult to maintain the level of professionalism necessary for the safety and accomplishment of the ship's mission due to the cramped living quarters and lack of privacy. Additionally, in such a small space, there is a great potential for sexual misconduct and harassment. Despite this, it happens frequently for sailors to fall in love while serving overseas. It's not unusual for sailors to form deep relationships with their shipmates as a result of the hardship and loneliness of spending months at sea. Nevertheless, it's crucial to keep in mind that the aircraft carrier is a military vessel and the sailors on board are there to carry out their duties. The ship's mission is of the utmost importance and any conduct that would jeopardize its security or success is expressly forbidden. It is a well-known fact that being in the U.S. Navy is not an easy job. It means they have to be alone at sea for long periods, away from their loved ones. As part of their basic training, these soldiers are given the chance to learn about the risks that come with being in the Navy. While they are at sea, they could face several dangers such as extreme weather conditions and getting attacked by enemy forces. Because of this part of their training, they are better able to plan for and avoid possible workplace dangers. You might think it would be easier to live on a battleship than it is. The crew members living quarters on the ship are usually very small and they don't have much or any privacy. A sailor at sea usually works more than 40 hours a week. The United States Navy has a method where sailors can move from one department to another while they are on deployment. This keeps sailors from getting too tired while they are on duty. This helps the sailors on a boat always be ready for battle. Most of these sailors' free time isn't free time because they can use it to catch up on things they didn't have time to do while they were on the job. During their free time, they can do important things like laundry and clean their beds. On some days, a military action like a resupply at sea or an airplane landing or taking off from the flight deck may happen. At the end of these kinds of days, when a sailor's free time is limited, there may be a military operation going on. What should have been about eight hours of sleep is now no more than three hours. Most government leaders say that U.S. Navy sailors should work 40 hours a week, but that is not what sailors do. Unlike most people who start their work week on Sunday, theirs is split into three separate parts. Thursday is their day, which is usually when their ship goes out to sea. Crew members don't get time off on weekends, even on Sundays, because they have to keep working until they get back to port. This means that team members don't have the weekends off. Some pilots may have trouble keeping track of time because each day is almost the same as the day before. Throughout its past, the U.S. Navy has taken several steps to make sure that its sailors are at least somewhat comfortable as they put their lives at risk on the sea. Because of this, some aircraft carriers even have Starbucks shops on board. When you can't drink at work, there's no better way to calm down than with a hot, boiling cup of coffee. Steel cutting is a popular way for sailors in the U.S. Navy to blow off steam when they are at sea. Beach picnic photos and movies from this event have made people want to be there. When the 5,000 soldiers who live and work on an aircraft carrier want to have fun, they go out on the ship's deck. Sailors haven't always had meals on the beach to have a good time, though. Even though the British Navy was the first to come up with the tradition of all hands to bathe, it is now a tradition of all military ships. The deck of a normal aircraft carrier is 60 feet above the surface of the water. This is done to avoid or greatly reduce the chance that sailors will get hurt by diving into the water. The elevators in the hangar bays of aircraft ships are lowered to a height that is half of what it used to be, so they can even jump off the ship at a height of 30 feet as a way to train. Not only do these picnics help boost the mood of the crew, but they also give the sailors some much-needed vitamin D. Some sailors can't leave the deck for a long time, so the Steel Beach lunch is their only chance to see the sun during that time. When everyone on the ship comes out to play and talk the deck, which is usually four to five acres, gets very small. Some of the things that sailors like to do on deck are card games, chess, football, basketball, volleyball, and jumping rope. Some people will be happy to just read a book or lie in the sun. Since a picnic wouldn't be complete without food and drink, the person in charge of the kitchen will decide which dishes will be cooked on the deck. 
During steel beach picnics on aircraft carriers are also coolers full of ice-cold beer for the soldiers to drink to cool off. Things are a little different when steel beach picnics are held on subs. The surface of a submarine is not only much smaller than the deck of an aircraft carrier, but it also has a bent shape. Because of these dimensions, the soldiers inside the submarine have no choice but to jump into the water to cool off. After a nice long swim in the sea to relax and unwind, they head back to the ship for a nice warm lunch. Sailors could also hang out with their friends and play video games, get a tan or study for required classes that would help them move up in their jobs. Some sailors bring their gaming systems with them on deployment so they can keep playing games with their shipmates. Warcraft and Dungeons and Dragons are two of these games. The team members could also use their free time to do things outside of work that they were interested in. Stalers could also enjoy other things like reading and writing, singing, dancing, and other things. Around the middle of the 1800s, a group of people called the American Seamen's Friends Society got together to give books to sailors and improve their mood and ability to get along with others. People who work on ships have found that listening to music is a great way to pass the time. The sailors might get together and sing songs or tell each other stories to pass the time. Unlike their friends, sailors who like music will grab a range of musical instruments and bring them on board the ship and dive into the world of folk and soul music to keep the mood lively. Some sailors choose painting on their day off. That was it for today, did you like the video? Tell us what you think of the video in the comments section below and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more interesting videos about the military.